It's This Week in Bourbon, where we're celebrating Ryan's 37th birthday. Happy birthday, Ryan. Now here's your headlines for April 29th, 2022. Heaven Hill has announced they will build a new $135 million distillery. The American Craft Spirits Association elects an all-female board of directors. And Chattanooga Whiskey announces their founder's 10th anniversary blend. But before we get started, here's a quick word from our partners. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to NoseYourBourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Ed Bly and Rising Tide Spirits are back again with a new release of Old Stubborn Bourbon. And this release of Old Stubborn is a premium hand marriage of 10, 11, and 12-year cask drink, barely filtered pot still bourbon. It comes in at a staggering 123.8 proof. And the flavoring grain for this one, which the last one was weeded, but this time it's now rye. Rich, sweet, and bold with a long finish that's sure to be another eye-opener. You can order online at Sealbox or TheBourbonConcierge.com, and you can even purchase in person at Revival Vintage Spirits and even now with very few select stores in Kentucky. You can get it now while you can, but be sure to do it because it's not going to last long. Play Whiskey Wednesday Round 11, The Memory Game. Until June 26, each week you can win one of our 12 incredible grand prizes. Select two doors at checkout. And if they match on drawing night, you'll win that bottle. Not a match? No worries. You still score a Weller 12-year. Every $5 ticket gives you five chances to win, including four weekly bonus prizes. Get your tickets now at give270.org. Charitable Gaming License ORG 0002703. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single-barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina. Drink responsibly and B21. Welcome back, everybody. It's another week, which means another this week in bourbon, which we've got a pretty good amount of bourbon news. And that first headline really kind of shook the bourbon world this week. So I'm excited to be able to talk about it. And I know that you had, Ryan, you had kind of known about it a little ahead of time, but we can dive into it in a minute. But Happy birthday. You excited to be celebrating your birthday with everybody out there in podcast land? Yeah, thank you. I guess if you're listening to it now, my birthday was yesterday, so, <laughs> or t tomorrow, I don't know, <laughs> depending, but uh, yes, thank you uh, for the happy birthday wishes. It's, uh, yeah, I don't really get too excited about birthdays, but it's always fun to uh, have people tell you on that day, and so I appreciate everything. Is it is it just you think it's a personality? You think it's a, a time in our lives or a year that comes when you go, all right, I really don't feel like celebrating anymore. Because sometimes I feel like celebrating and then I realize, man, I'm getting old. I don't think I should be celebrating. Nobody nobody celebrates a 38th birthday or 39th birthday. Like it just doesn't feel doesn't feel right. Yeah, I think it's after the 21st. You're like, uh, <laughs> it's all downhill. From here. It's like it's like uh, it's nothing too exciting anymore. But you know. <laughs> Some people still let my, I like selling other people's birthdays. I just feel bad making people celebrate for mine. <laughs> I'm like, who gives a shit, you know, about mine? Well, but, sometimes uh, you need an excuse just to do something and get out there. Oh, yeah. I love other people's birthdays. We're like, come do this. I'm like, of course. But well, I feel bad asking people to do something for mine. So, Do you just not like to be the center of attention? Is that what it comes down to? I think that's it. Yeah. Because it's like, it really is. Because if it's your birthday... Everybody's either buying you shots or they're wanting to talk to you. They're wanting to reminisce on something and all you're thinking of like, okay, how quickly can I get out of here and go to bed? Well, and two, it's like, mine's always like either the week of or week before Derby. So like 
everybody's like pre- pre- saving up for that week of shenanigans then. So, you know, I'm like, ah, we'll just celebrate Derby, you know, cause everybody's <laughs> celebrating anyways. So we'll just kind of hide it in that, you know, hide it in all the festivities there. So nobody's going to cash in their chips for Ryan's birthday. Is that what it comes down to? Yeah, that's right. No, <laughs> nobody's bringing out old Forrester birthday bourbon for me or anything, you know, just not yet. Just, we'll find out. But Maybe. we did have a nice lunch at Barstone Bourbon Company. Thank you to Susie and our Dan whole team over there. The whole yeah. team over there. That was very nice of them and uh, had a great day there. We love those guys and girls and gals and whatever. Uh, <laughs> and everybody else over there. <laughs> everybody there. So thank you for that. That was very kind. I was about to say, we've had a we've had a pretty busy week. And as we're recording this, the week is still going to be going. We've picked a barrel from Rare Character. We've been to BBC. We picked a barrel from New England Barrel Company. And then we're also heading to West Virginia this week. If you're listening to this, we might be heading back from West Virginia. But we're going to be talking to our good friends over at Smooth Ambler and picking another barrel while we're there. So trace yeah. barrels in one week. That's a pretty big week for us. Yeah. And uh, we're going to head to, gosh, oh, Lewisburg. Yeah. So Lewisburg, White Sulphur Springs, beautiful con- beautiful part of the country in the Appalachian Mountain kind of range, I think. It's in the mountain range. I think it's, <laughs> I know the Appalachians there. something over there, yeah. But I, I love that, I love Appalachian Mountains or just the East Coast. And so, not, we're not on the East Coast, the Eastern Mountains, but. Uh, <laughs> Easter, Eastern, more of a coast, yeah. Yeah, Eastern Mountains. But uh, yeah, excited to see Smooth Ambler. We've never been there and we love John and those guys and girls. So uh, yeah, excited to hang out for a couple of days and then come back and get ready for Derby Week. Yeah, we'll report back. We'll have a lot more cool things to be able to talk about when that time comes. But you ready to start hitting some news? Let's do it. Got some big ones. Yeah, and that first one right there, it's been nine decades since the first operating a distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky, but now the nation's largest independent, family-owned, and operated distiller and distilled, distilled spirits supplier is deepening its bourbon roots in its entire, or sorry, in its home community, and that's Heaven Hill Distillery. They are announcing plans for a new $135 million distillery that will open by 2024. The state-of-the-art distillery will augment Heaven Hill's distilling capacity to meet increased global whiskey demand and marks the company's return to distilling in Bardstown since the fire of 1996, when Heaven Hill lost its on-site distillery, seven rick houses, and almost 100,000 barrels of whiskey. After the fire, Heaven Hills Distilling moved to the historic Bernheim Distillery in Louisville. While bottling and aging of whiskey and other functions, those continue to stay in Bardstown, where they still remain today. Heaven Hill will build a new distillery on a vacant 61-acre site at 1015 Old Bloomfield Pike, which is off of KY or Kentucky 245. Construction is slated to begin this spring, and the distillery will be operational by the end of 2024. The initial production is slated for 10 million proof gallons a year, which is around 150,000 barrels, and will have the capacity to ramp up to producing 30 million proof gallons, or around 450,000 barrels, and that'll happen over time. Heaven Hill will continue to age bourbon at, at its existing locations, and the Bernheim Distillery in Louisville will continue to operate at full capacity. So just keep keep the engine churning right there. It's going to be a lot more stuff. Yeah, this is uh, great news. Um, well, especially for us peons trying to get in the bourbon game. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, this is awesome because, you know, Heaven Hill, it's a fantastic distillery, great, you know, history, great products. You know, the one thing missing when you come to Bardstown and you go to do the Heaven Hill visitor experience, it's much better with the new, but you still don't get to see that workhorse of a distillery. And, you know, uh, I'm I'm glad that it's coming back to Bardstown because Bernheim is an awesome facility, but it's a workhorse, you know, it's like a straight manufacturing facility, like... It's a reason no why it's not open to the public. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, but uh, yeah, this is exciting news, especially for Bardstown. It's funny. I've been, I've been, I knew it was going on for probably, I don't know, three months. And it's funny to say they start construction in the spring. They've been doing construction for like two months over there. <laughs> we, <laughs> at the, we actually drove by the old, a little bit earlier and it's, yeah, they've already started leveling out the, all the, I was to say the floor, but the dirt over there. Yeah. The old Mago uh, property, which was a, company that does like road and construction provides them materials and whatnot but anyways it's just a another sign of like what's to come for bourbon the future of it you know they're uh seeing the crystal ball and think that this thing's got a lot more room to grow and they need to get ahead of the production so uh this is exciting news all around for bardstown for heaven hill and for 
everyone in the bourbon industry. So, yeah, I, I did some quick math. Usually, shutdown is around. You're usually not distilling around maybe 20 days out of the year, something like that. Is that about it? Yeah, that's probably about right. Usually, usually they shut down for two weeks around Christmas, and then usually like two weeks in the summer. Okay, one to two weeks in the summer. Yeah. All right. So I, I was doing some quick math. So it's around probably around 430 to 450 barrels they'll be able to produce per day uh, is what you get out of that 150,000. And Bernheim is doing close to 1,000 a day. So it's going to be half the capacity of what's over there, but it's going to be able to go beyond the capacity of Bernheim. And that just kind of shows you like their they're, they're crystal ball is a lot clearer than ours. So I'm, I'm excited to see this, this level of growth. Yeah. And, you know, they were filling 10, 50,000 barrel warehouses and they're building more and more and more. And so it's just like, wow. I mean, I guess this is just the beginning. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's uh, fingers you know, crossed. I just never, never would have thought it got this big, but I'm excited for, you know, to, to keep this thing going. So it's a big excited. investment. So yeah, congratulations to them. It's going to be fun to watch that come and, and be a thing over here in the next, gosh, five years as we continue to watch it grow and be built. And I know it's at 2024, but we know, we know construction times. They usually, usually lag a little bit, but you'll be able to see it grow over time. You'll be able to see some of the first whiskey come out of there in the next few years. So it'll be fun. We're looking yeah. forward to it. It'll be about the same time our barrels come of age. So <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> we can celebrate together. So the American Craft Spirits Association, they've announced the results of its national election for its board of directors. The elected members are 100% female. And this marks the first time in the drinks industry history that there is a 100% woman identifying board that will steer a national trade association. So Becky Harris of Catoctin Creek Distilling, which is, of course, one of our great partners, she was reelected as president of the board of directors. And she's also served as a member of the organization's board of directors since 2019 and as president since 2020. Gina Holman of Jay Carver Distillery and Jessica Lemon of Cart and Horse Distilling were elected as the organization's vice president and secretary and treasurer. The board of directors will work with CEO Margie Lehrman to discuss and talk about key issues facing the craft distilling industry, including the organization's continued effort to push more direct-to-consumer shipping. All right. Congratulations to them. And yes. I'm on board with their agenda. That's, uh, we're, that's what we're all pushing for. Yeah, so I'd say so. Let's, let's make it happen. Check- yeah, plus one in a checkbox next to that. We'll take it. So Horse Soldier That's Bourbon, right. Bourbon, Horse Soldier Bourbon, they have now purchased a 5,000 square foot Goldenberg, Golden, yeah, Goldenberg building in downtown Somerset, Kentucky. And they will open a smart, casual dining restaurant and cocktail experience in the space that is in front of the J, sorry, the Jarfly Brewing Company. And that faces the Fountain Square. It will be modern. Sorry, I can't even talk tonight. It will be modeled after the Urban Stillhouse, which is the company's ultimate horse soldier experience, and in the Warehouse Arts District of Saint Petersburg, Florida. So, following Horse Soldiers' historic distillery groundbreaking in October last year, the company's leadership team embraced this downtown project. In addition to performing geotechnical work on the distillery site, the Urban Stillhouse in Saint Petersburg, which is owned by Meredith Coco, which is a daughter of Horse Soldier Bourbon President John Coco, it offers a robust brunch, dinner, and drink menus, complete with tasting flights and signature drinks. Details and renderings of the Somerset Urban Stillhouse will be shared in the coming months, and lunch will be added to the menu too. So now you got somewhere to go for lunch in Somerset now. Yeah. As if there wasn't a place to go already, but. <laughs> it's the, I think it's Somerset's the houseboat capital manufacturing city it in is. the world. It is. The, uh, I've been to Somerset many a times in college. I had one of my roommates in college was from Somerset. Uh, from the, yep. And they were the home of the Briar Jumpers. That's the high school over there. So Rabbits was their, their school mascot. Yeah. We, our high school met them in like the class A, uh, Sweet six or final eight or something, they beat us. That's why I still have it salty for Somerset. But <laughs> I do, I do like that area. I like General Burnside Golf Course and love Lake Cumberland, obviously. So uh, that'd be Lake a cool. Cumberland, th- Lee Sport Marina. Somerset's a cool city, so I think this will be. It's interesting that uh, you know Horse Soldier being in St. Petersburg is having just like a restaurant visitor center kind of thing here. No, they're and, building a whole distillery. Oh, now okay. In Somerset. Gotcha. So this is they're already they're already building the summer uh, the distillery in Somerset. They broke ground in October of last year. Now they said, "Hey, let's go ahead and up this," and they're going to go ahead and add a add a restaurant into it as well. So, so we'll have two distilleries: one in Saint Petersburg, one in here. 
I think the one in St. Petersburg is just kind of like an HQ. I don't think there's gotcha. a distillery there. It's just kind of where they all are together. And it might be one of those things. We haven't talked to them before. I know people reached out and said, you got to go talk to the horse soldier guys. We haven't done it yet. It's it's on the it's on the, the to-do list at one of these days. But I have a feeling that, you know, to be a staple product, to be known in Kentucky, you've got to have some sort of presence in Kentucky. Sure. And I remember when the city of Somerset actually put out something that said they were going to subsidize a lot of tax incentives for somebody to move a distilling operation to Somerset. It was actually sent over to me thinking we would do it. And I was like, now we're (laughs) doing that. Um, But, you know, they they took it and that's what they ran with it. So uh, we're going to see that slowly grow grow out of Somerset, Kentucky. Smart for Somerset. That's tax Mm -hmm. incentives are huge. It's good, good stuff. I love it. Sure is. Well, you've already talked a little bit about the Derby. Well, there's the, I don't know if you call it the anti-Derby. Maybe it's the, it's a, it's a co-mingled, it's a, it's a a, a co-event, co-located, whatever it is. It's called the slowest two minutes in sports. And that's the Kentucky Turtle Derby. That's presented by Old Forester Bourbon. It returns this year on the first Saturday in May, which is also Derby. And for the first time ever, Turtle fans can win cash on the race by guessing the winners. And that's thanks to the partnership with DraftKings. In its third year, the Kentucky Turtle Derby was resurrected by Old Forester in 2020 when the Kentucky Derby was delayed due to the global pandemic. So Old Forester decided to race turtles that year, and now they're going to do it every year since. Turtles actually raced in Louisville in the 1945 Derby during the world, during World War II, which is the only other time in history that the Derby ran on a date other than the first Saturday in May. The turtles will quote-unquote race with the action shown in more than 10,000 bars and restaurants nationwide. In addition, the race will be streamed to YouTube and on the big board at Churchill Downs for more than 150,000 people at the track that can watch it during the 148th running of the Kentucky Derby. This will be on starting, or sorry to say, starting on April 25th, which has already passed, and until the race on 4 p.m. on Saturday, May 7th, fans can uh, go and answer various questions. Questions they can go answer various questions about the turtles in the race, and you can do that online. All those with correct answers will split a five thousand dollar pot, and you can go and visit DraftKings.com to go and play. So you ask the turtles questions about <laughs> you answer <laughs> questions about the turtles. <laughs> oh, okay, like. I, it's, there's no way that you're going to know the answers. It's just a big guessing game because what are you going to say? Yeah, this one's favorite food is lettuce. I mean, I don't know. Do they have the, the speed numbers on those turtles? Like what, what their there workouts are? There actually is odds. There's odds on the turtles. They, they, they put them out there. So there's some with two to one, some with five to one, some with 20 to one. I don't know how they got to like, that. Is that the skinny turtles versus the fat ones? Or like <laughs> snappers I, versus like... Hey, tortoise i don't know terrapins i don't know if they had any you know is Raphael and michelangelo i there? like that <laughs> one uh, donatello and leonardo yeah, i don't know if they had any pre-races or anything like that to figure out if, hey can we find some real odds on these because if you're gonna bet on them you're gonna want to know that if not it's just a one in ten shot to see if you're gonna win which yeah, i wonder if they prepped at keeneland before they came into churchill for the week you know <laughs> Yeah, is there, a, is there another derby that these turtles have to compete in to make sure that they thin the herd? I have no idea, but... But gamblers will probably love it because they love prop bets and dumb shit like this. So it's... A, I can see a lot of my friends betting on this, so... Why not? Just I'll go ahead. Action. I'll put five bucks on. Do you have any names of the turtles? They actually, they're on the website. I didn't put them on here because I figured it would take too long to run through them all. But they do have names. They're they're out there. I think there was one that was named like Simon. So there's there's some fun ones. There's some ones that are just kind of average. Simon events. says. So there's a new article that came out from our friend Aaron Goldfarb over at Vine Pair. And this, is, this isn't really news. This is actually just a pretty interesting article because I saw this as I scrolled to t- through TikTok one time and... Let's go ahead and and talk about this a little bit. So he wrote all this and he goes, I soon found myself down one of the strangest rabbit holes I've ever traveled in my career of studying the buying habits of American whiskey collectors. There was a Van Winkle Special Reserve 12-year lot B and had the portrait of rock god Mick Jagger hand-painted onto one of the bottles. It was offered on Charity Buzz, which is an online auction site that has long featured extraordinary experiences to raise money for worthy causes. And this unique item sold for $3,000. And he goes, I'm used to whiskey dorks collecting questionably rare items, cartoonish sticker clad bottles, Blanton's with specific dump dates, anything smoke wagon. But this, I surely thought, 
was the apex of the modern whiskey collector's demand for the obscure and limited. He eventually tracked down the genius behind these Pappy portraits and, and his home studio uh, that was actually in Manhattan, New York, and his name is Mark Cannell. Mark had no plans to enter the world of art because, uh, well, it actually happened because TikTok uh, started with many of his videos and his paintings started going viral. He painted portraits on, pap on top of Pappy bottles such as Tom Brady and Gronk, Paul McCartney, Joe Burrow, Matt Stafford, and even Julian Van Winkle wearing a Santa hat. Brad Pedler is another guy that got introduced into this article. He's a wealth manager in Tampa, Florida area. In his 8,000 square foot home, Pedler is one of the most impressive whiskey collections that Aaron had ever seen, with over 2,000 bottles featuring such unicorns of unicorns, like the 19-year-old Cordy Brothers, 18-year-old Blue Smoke, Red Hook Rye. He said last year alone, Pedler says that he spent $400,000 on rare whiskey. And his first acquisition was literally Cannell's first piece of Pappy art where he spent $5,000 on it. The funniest thing is, Pedler doesn't even drink, but he does collect and instantly wanted more of Cannell's work. By now, Cannell estimates that he has done 50 or 60 bottles and the requests just keep coming in. And for Charity Buzz, which simply can't get list enough of his bottles, from Average Joes, you also find him on TikTok and Instagram and other people that just want to commission their own kind of artwork. Of course, the whiskey collecting world is full as many haters and taters. And so to no surprise, a lot of people get really angry and not that they think they, they, he's actually defacing these pricey bottles. But in many cases, rendering them that's something that will never be open nor tasted. One person even commented, said, that's one expensive canvas. But... Candle says, it's unbelievable that I can wake up and just paint as a full-time job now. I didn't even know there was such demand out there, and now I can barely keep up with it. So pretty interesting. I remember scrolling through TikTok one time, and the one time I found it was actually during the Super Bowl, and I saw the painting of Joe Burrow on the old Rip Van Winkle 10-year bottle, and this guy's been doing a lot of them. They're really good paintings. Like, they're really good, but he uses a, a Van Winkle bottle as its canvas, and people are buying these things up. Sazerac know about this? <laughs> <You're> probably right. <laughs> That's my only concern. Uh, you hope you better have a lawyer or something. Yeah, because yeah. technically, is that reselling whiskey? I mean, you are you might be running through some gray area right there. Is it, is it flipping? I don't know. I, possibly? I don't know. Yeah. I'd be nervous. There's... There's a lot of gray area there, and Aaron just dug this guy up, and now he's <laughs> he's, he's going to be facing something, and we just blew him up even more. So, sorry, Mark, if you're reading this, and but I'm sure Aaron wow. Aaron did his due diligence first. Yeah, I have to check these out. I haven't seen any of these, but sounds awesome. Yeah, um, you, can, you can go ahead and Google this on, on Vine Pair. It's, it's a lot of really good artwork. It's surprisingly very realistic, but the way that it, we just kind of framed it, just realized, yeah, he's he's flipping whiskey bottles just because he's painting somebody's face on it. It's the same thing <laughs> as if we put a sticker on it and resold it for three thousand dollars. Same process. Ooh, I'm looking at them now. Dang, those are cool. See, they're pretty nice. They're pretty nice. Now people too are going to start checking them out too. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't send spend three thousand dollars on them, but if you got the money, why not? You like art? I'm, I'm, this is wild. So yeah, they're pretty cool. They are cool. I like there you the go. Brady and Gronk, the one that's tight. <laughs> that's tight. I like I like that one. <laughs> the one Trump, I'm sure you want that one. Yeah, there was actually <laughs> one. Uh, it, it actually says in the article he did one with Trump, it, it kind of wearing, you know, the it's, the Rocky it's like a boxer outfit. Yeah, he's, yeah, he looks like Rocky, and he got to meet Trump, and Trump said, "I, I want one of those bottles." I'm taking so. one. Of course he does. He's like, yeah, I love myself. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, let's go before we, people start saying we shoehorn politics into all of our, our episodes now. It's just about art, guys. Come on. It is. It is. So while most Americans have cheered the reforms of alcohol delivery, there's also been a little bit of pushback. And a common concern about alcohol delivery is that it could somehow provide a backdoor route for more underage kids to access alcohol. Although this may sound scary, America has experimented with alcohol delivery before, and new research shows that alcohol delivery historically has not led to more underage drinking. And data from a report by R Street reveals that states that have continuously allowed direct-to-consumer wine delivery over the past few decades have actually seen a larger decline in underage alcohol consumption than states that prohibited wine shipments. Namely, states that allowed direct wine shipments from 2003 to 2019 saw a 44.3% decline in underage drinking 
compared to a 43% decline in states that forbid it during the entire ta- during the entire time. Furthermore, states that engage in the most robust forms of direct-to-consumer wine delivery reforms between 2003 and 2019 by going from no direct wine delivery to a full-fledged wine delivery saw even a larger decline in underage drinking than states that engage in just more modest forms. So in other words, the more permissible states were with direct-consumer wine shipments, the more their underage drinking rates fell. That does not prove that direct wine shipments actually cause less underage drinking, but it does demonstrate that alcohol delivery is not correlated with more underage drinking. Yeah, causation versus correlation or whatever. I mean, most underage drinkers probably don't drink wine, but... uh, They probably don't. (laughs) That was the last thing on my mind when I was... Unless it's uh, Boone Farm. I never was like, hey, can you pick me up a vintage uh, nickel and nickel for... (laughs) I'm really looking for an earthy cab tonight. Yeah, yeah. I got this party at night. We're going to have some... I don't know. I, I this could go a lot of <laughs> <missing> ways, but <laughs> dry Chardonnay, something from a you know the Malbec region of of Australia would be really good right now. So <laughs> we're gonna have a slip and slide party. So I really think a <laughs> Sauvignon Blanc or a buttery Chard would be good. <laughs> yeah, it'll go well with everybody hanging from the chandeliers. I mean, I like the argument, but I can't put too much weight in this because no. underage kids don't drink wine unless it's Boone's, <laughs> Boone's Farm or something. Very true. So even more about just finding ways to, to get more people buying things, Amazon, they have also long sought after how to perfect and deliver the most convenient goods delivery experience to its customers. It started with everything shipped to your door and has progressed to the fastest and seemingly easiest way to pick up goods that you may want in person. And welcome to the new Just Walk Out technology. This is a shopping option where customers can key into the store and leave with the goods and wines that they like with two stores right now in Washington, D.C. and in Sherman Oaks, California that are pioneering the technology with separate entrance for wine sales. The company notes that with Just Walk Out shopping, you have three different ways to pay. You have the in-store code on your Whole Foods Market or Amazon app that is linked to a valid credit or debit card. Your Amazon One is linked to your Amazon account or a credit and debit card just linked to your Amazon account. Just Walk Out technology is made possible by a combination of computer vision, sensor fusion, and deep learning, similar to what you'd find in a self-driving car. So once in the stores, customers will be greeted by a team member at the store's entry gates, and then they can choose if they want to just shop using Just Walk Out technology or using self-checkout lanes. So if you're worried about underage drinking, the separate wine entrance is home to an actual human who will be IDing customers. I like it. Yes. Automate so. it. I hate pulling out my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it's so time consuming. It's like 10 seconds. I can't never get back. I mean, I, there is something about just removing as much friction as possible. I, I kind of like this idea. I remember they, they piloted this because they had an Amazon store, I remember in D.C., I don't think they had, were doing wines yet, but now they're adding wine into it. So you can just literally walk in and walk out. There's no checkout. There's nothing. Everything is just censored and just tied. And you just know when you're leaving what you're, what you're getting. So I, I kind of, I kind of like it. I'd like to be able to see where this is going to go. I mean, we see Big the evolution. brother taking all my rights. Uh. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, you see where it's going. Let's just look at grocery store chains. Could you imagine that people would get uh. rid of the people that would sit there and scan your bag, your grocery items now i don't even like to do that i like to go to the u scan could you imagine like, uh, don't even I like go to the go, scan anymore i like people scanning it i'm lazy i'm like <laughs> it's like because you scan and then it's like item not there whatever it's like <laughs> put the item there i'm like it is there damn it and then the person has to come and clear it out and then you're like sorry i don't know it's on there i don't know why <laughs> That or I go and I try to scan it with it or get out with an avocado and it doesn't have the number on it. So I just type in avocado and it's like, which one? Is it the organic? Is it the medium? Is it the large? I'm like, I I don't know. It's just an avocado. They're like fruit by picture. I feel like I'm a (laughs) kindergartner in there. I'm like, what the hell? And so I'd rather them just scan it. And then, but. uh, Your celery doesn't look like my celery. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I think it's, uh, yeah, why not? I mean, hell, everybody talks about every company has data on you like target can predict like somebody's birth like a pregnant mother's delivery date like within like 36 hours based on her buying habits so it's like they know everything about us anyways so might as well just scan my eye, my retina to see if i'm <laughs> 21 or not and, and then check my 
tie my debit card to it. So I just put a chip in my neck and just scanned on the way out. I'm fine with that too. Yeah. Kenny pay. <laughs> so the CGA's on-premise measurement, that's actually looked at how spirits are performed by price tier across U.S. bars and restaurants. And this is data from February of 2022. And this is compared with the same month-long period of last year. So the premium price tier of spirits, the market took a 40% share of on-trade sales by value in February 2022, while super premium brands took 18%. Ultra premium spirits had a 4% share with sales soaring by 180% year on year. As such, the three premium categories now count for 62 cents in every US dollar spent on spirits. So looking at spirits categories, 50% of gin sales now come from a premium price tier. Premium and super premium segments have seen their sales skyrocket by 137% and 167%. Meanwhile, the super premium tequila share of its total sales have climbed from 28% to 32%, while the mid price tier shares have dropped from 32 to 28. Premium vodka has increased from 42 to 44, and whiskey's super premium and ultra premium sales have jumped by 163 and 165%, respectively. And this is all in February of 2022. So just more data to show you that the boom is happening. So go and build the bigger distillery. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm the vodka one intrigues me. I'm like, premium vodka is not it's it's not worth the extra money. It's a, it's, it's marketing right there at its finest. <laughs> it is, but uh yeah, I'm not surprised with the bourbon. I mean, we've seen it and talked about it ad nauseum how premiumization is a new thing. So yep. because Bourbon was so undervalued for so long, and uh, yeah, it's like sixty five is the new thirty or thirty. Yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> sixty five is the new there. thirty. Yeah, <laughs> buckle up because one hundred might be the new sixty five one of these days. Oh, I know. It, it the way things are going, it doesn't. It wouldn't surprise me. But mm -hmm. but the good thing is, you get a lot of drinks out of a hundred dollar bottle. So, Sorry, you get twenty two versus a. Hundred dollar bottle of wine, you get four. You know, so much better value. Pays for itself bourbon. at that point. Gosh, it's like giving away for free, in my yeah, opinion. It's then. like you're getting money back. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the last two here are more about the conservation. You know, Earth Day has kind of been happening. That happened last week. So here's some some news that maybe feel good if you're if you're, if you're very conscious about our planet. So Green River Distilling. They have announced its support of the Ohio River Foundation through its affiliation with 1% for the Planet. So the Ohio River Foundation is a Cincinnati-based nonprofit with programs dedicated to protecting and improving the water quality and the ecology of the Ohio River and its entire watershed. This partnership is a part of Green River's Green River Cares Initiative. And in addition to supporting the Ohio River Foundation with funding and sustainable practices, the distillery team will also participate in regular volunteer efforts. Some examples of these positive practices include spent grain being shared with local farmers, solar panels are being installed on the campus to power all the rick houses, and a 20,000 square foot wildflower habitat and garden will support local bees and other wildlife. And other news this week is that Bullet Frontier Whiskey has met its goal of planting 1 million trees by 2025, which is three years ahead of schedule. And that's in partnership with American Forest. So together, they have successfully restored over 2,000 acres of forest landscapes equivalent to more than 1,500 football fields that will provide white oak, white oak tree landscapes with long-term health and resilience for years to come. Bullet is embarking on a new mission with American Forest to advance tree equity and ensure tree cover in cities is equi equitably distributed. Simply put, tree equity is about making sure everyone can experience and benefits of trees no matter their income or where they live. Bullet Frontier Whiskey will also work with Street Art for the Mankind, which is a nonprofit organization that sparks social change through the power of art to support the undecade on ecosystem restoration with a multi-city mural project to raise awareness for its collective vision. I'm not surprised. I mean, it makes sense, Green River, to invest in the Ohio River because not only they get Cincinnati pollution they get louisville pollution by the time it makes them they're like god damn this water is <laughs> this is we need to do nasty. something about it yeah no well, i'm kidding but the uh, eight odd catfish in there that's right but no that's awesome and uh i was trying i i didn't know where you're going with tree equity i was like wait a minute you can't make all the trees the same size it's like they're, <laughs> they're gonna i'm like let's come on equity's been pushed i don't know but uh anyways <laughs> that i get it down i appreciate it so uh yeah, kudos to uh, those two companies for giving back to the environment. 
Yeah. Uh, one day, I, I hope that we can grow big enough that we can do something to give back to the environment, only because it's, you know, the, this industry does give you a lot, give a lot back to you, and we utilize our natural resources quite a bit in this industry as well. So it is good to be able to see companies give back and, and do have something to make some sort of impact in regenerative forests and all that sort of stuff too. We do by breathing. Trees love carbon. They take all our carbon, <laughs> you. all this. and uh, you've, been, you've been doing it for 37 years now. Exactly. So wow. all right. now we're getting into politics again. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on. Well, in fact, let's go ahead and take a break because we're going to come back with some more bourbon release news. But before we do that, here's a quick word from our partners. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point of sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award winning 24 7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon, the farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus Magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. Back with some bourbon release news. We don't have a whole lot to go through, but we have some some fun ones, and we won't get any too political on you. I don't think there's any political things that we could do because there's some fun ones that are happening here. And this first one, I saw this actually come from our friend Jay, who runs Whiskey Raiders, and they just had a tagline that said, this popular clothing brand starts a whiskey label and we have no idea why. So here (laughs) here it is. So popular clothing brand Troll Company has launched its first bourbon called 5-9 Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. According to the brand, the bourbon is intended to honor hardworking and under-recognized blue-collar Americans who definitely don't subscribe to a 9-to-5 workday, hence the name 5-to-9 name, which flips 9-5 on its head. It was distilled in Owensboro, Kentucky, meaning that it's likely produced by Green River Distilling, aged a minimum of two years. 5-9 is 90-proof whiskey with a 21% rye mash bill, making it a high rye bourbon. It is a 90-proof bourbon and is for sale for $45 on their website. I wonder how many of these brands will be in Heaven Hills label room one day where they just buy them up. You know? <laughs> <They just die laughs> it's off. like, it's like you go to, um, Owen and them's bar and all these dusty bars and you see how many brands Heaven Hill bought, you know, from back in the day when people just started brands, you know, just, uh, I don't know. It's all coming back. It's funny. Just I guess we're, on the we're, we're, we're one of them too. So, I mean, I'm not, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it is just weird to say. I mean, it's the hot thing. Come out with your own whiskey line, your own whiskey brand. Celebrities are doing it. If you have a popular, and this is kind of like a a, a Danner boot kind of company, you know. A, a Never working, heard of this brand, but. Yeah, uh, it's, it's kind of that that sort of thing. A Carhartt, maybe that, rec, you know, resonates with some people. It's that kind of clothing company. And so they're. Which I love. I love Carhartt because I had Carhartts growing up because I had to like do hard work and now like hipsters work hard and i'm like <laughs> i don't think that's what it was for buddy it's it's for like getting out there and uh freezing your ass off working hard not not looking cool and trendy well but apparently you just oh. haven't hung around the kardashians enough because instagram can make any any clothing line famous and somehow carhartt really started trending pretty hard 
Yeah, and drinking tequila straws, I guess, too. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> so our other headline that we had was that Chattanooga Whiskey, they're announcing their founder's 10th anniversary blend. So this is formulated by their founder and CEO, Tim Pearsant, or Pearsant. We've also had him on the show before. So in the spring of 2012, Chattanooga Whiskey began blending and bottling the 1816, an award-winning whiskey that helped overturn century-old distilling laws, while eventually succeeding by their own signature Barrel 91 recipe. The whiskey's impact had never been forgotten, and the founder's 10th anniversary blend is a blend of three whiskey recipes that were distilled in both Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Lawrenceburg, Indiana, including two Tennessee high malt mash bills known as Smoked and SB091. After three to four years of primary and secondary aging of casks of the original 1860 recipe, they are then transferred in the Chattanooga Whiskey's 650-gallon charred oak 1860 barrel, where they are marrying together and ready for inclusion to the anniversary blend. The Founders 10th Anniversary Blend is bottled at 100 proof and has a $50 price tag. All right. Well, congratulations to them for 10 years. That's awesome. Yeah. 10 years. Um, I, we, really, we really feel like we really talked about them for the past two, maybe, but that's that's the sweat equity you got to put into this this business. You just can't come out of the clothing line and figure out that you're going to start selling whiskey. Yeah, you got to earn your stripes. You got to change a law in your state so that you can have sell whiskey like they those guys did. But uh, no, that's that's huge. Congratulations to them. So my 10 year wedding anniversary is this year as well. So we share a, an anniversary. <laughs> I'm sure I'm that's sure. exactly what they did it for. I'm sure they they're pumped to I'm, hear that. <laughs> we should have, we should have told their PR person. Be like, next time you send this out for their 20th anniversary, just know that it's also Ryan's 20th wedding anniversary. Yeah, we'll share a label on, <laughs> on your bottle. It'll be a double win. Yeah. So Woodford Reserve is introducing the first ever Derby in a Box to bring the greatest two minutes in sports directly into consumers' homes. So Derby in a Box includes everything needed to make ultimate cocktails for Kentucky Derby Party on the first Saturday in May. So each Derby kit will include a Woodford Reserve mint julep cup, a jigger and stir, along with mint julep cocktail syrup to stir up the classic cocktail. The box will also include Woodford Reserve's 2022 Derby bottle, featuring art from equine artist known for her stunning horse portraits, Jamie Corum. And for those in select states, they can get that. The bottle is also signed by Corum and Woodford Reserve master distiller Chris Morris. Additionally, as the finishing touch to any ensemble, buyers can also choose between a custom derby bow tie or scarf to complete the package. Only 148 boxes, honoring the Derby 148, are going to be available. In each box sold, a donation will be made to Old Friends Farm, which is a nonprofit located near Woodford Reserve, where famed thoroughbreds, including past derby winners, go to retire. It's now available for purchase from Woodford Reserve. Just go to their website, and it's for $500, and you get a signed bottle. Or if you can't get a bottle shipped to where you live, you can get a $350 package with the signed artwork and no bottle. I like it. Derby in the box. Derby in the air. You should make a one of your famous mint julep mixes to put in there for I, people. I don't I don't know if people could handle my famous mint julep mix, man. Yeah, it's like blackout derby in a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well I'll put it out there. So if if you're if you're listening to this, make sure you subscribe to our socials. I'll make sure I put my my old school mint julep kind of dirt party killer party gets the party going. I don't know what you would call it, but it definitely it definitely yeah, causes what a few you're hangovers. Going for. <laughs> yeah, it causes a few hangovers. I can tell you that. It's like at El Mundo, which is they they recommend only two on, margaritas on their menu. <laughs> They're like, we really re- caution against more than two. We'll do the same thing with these. Yeah, there'll be a there'll be a sticker on just the side of the box when you get it. Limit Don't take our word for it. Find out for yourself. I know, and tell us about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or or don't please don't tell us about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so our last one, it's not even bourbon. In fact, it's tequila. So this Cinco de Mayo, Patron and famed streetwear designer John Giger have teamed up once again to launch a limited edition Patron and John Giger GF01 sneakers featuring to reflect his signature street style enriched with his G logo while uniquely incorporating imagery of the iconic Patron B and classic green and white colorway throughout using specialty leather inspired by the agave fields in Jalisco, Mexico. The luxury sneaker is an example of the dedication to perfection that is the core of everything Patron does and the attention to detail that John puts into every one of his unique designs. This limited edition sneaker will be dropping on Cinco de Mayo at 5 p.m. 
on his website, johngeegerco.com, and this will retail for $250. The reason I put this on here is because how, how long do you think it'll be until we see a bourbon and sneaker collab? With Blue Run, it'll happen soon because <laughs> they already got the sneaker and the bourbon. So I feel like that'll be the next thing. Well, I mean, they're, they're got, they got not the a bad thing. I'd be excited good. for it. Yeah. I mean, well, but you got to have you got to have somebody that's like iconic into the streetwear to do it. Like they, they've got their their hooks. Like they've got to find a, a person. Like who's that person going to be? Like, I don't think you're going to come out with some some Heaven yeah, Hill Jordans. Or you're going to come out with some, you know, some, some BBC hard, hardaways. Yeah. <laughs> some BBC. I don't even know. Yeah. Have see, like, I don't know who would ever be the, the, the fashion icon that will take over the bourbon world and have some. We're not very fashionable in bourbon. That's we're, the, you know, we're, we act like we are. It, should I say that maybe we're not, but there's definitely people who are. I know that even like Elijah Craig had a few campaigns with some. Uh, some designers and stuff like that to have some some Instagram worthy shots. I, I do remember they had that not too long ago. So I could be see a good line for Drew Colesvin. He's he's fashion guy. He he's likes he's fashion. Gucci. He's got sneakers. He's Gucci. He's Prada. He's all that. Yeah, Drew, you be the first one. Yeah. But all right. Money's on Drew Colesvin. Get the purple wax shoes. <laughs> I, honestly, I would probably venture to say that you could do a will it crest on the side <laughs> something you know. collab and people would eat it up absolutely oh yeah absolutely. but that's gonna do it for this week in bourbon i hope you all had a good one enjoy the rest of your your car ride your run your grass cutting whatever it is that you're doing and we'll be back next week with even more bourbon news but cheers everybody toodles <laughs>